Today we're going to be doing a comparison on two different espresso machines. We got the Be Breville Barista Express and the Ranchilio Silvia. So welcome to Be Cabine's Coffee Corner where I'll be doing different reviews on different coffee gear and tips and tricks and advice on which products you should buy and answering the questions that you may have in the comments. So before we dive into this comparison, I ask that you please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more updated videos. It really, really helps me out. If you're looking at buying any of these products or any Espresso gear, I ask that you click the links in my description where you'll find these items. Where I'm And using those links, I'll make a slight commission at no extra charge for you, which helps continue to fund this YouTube channel. I also ask that you consider supporting me on Patreon where just a little bit a month, you get access to what's coming down the pipeline what my ideas are, as well as the opportunity to potentially win some coffee gear down the road. So please subscribe and like this video and consider supporting me on Patreon. Now let's go ahead and dive in to this review. We got the Breville Barista Express here and we got the Ranchilio Silvia here. I'm gonna start off by saying both of these are fairly comparable in price. We got $700 almost even here with the Breville and we got $600 or we got 735 new with the Ranchilio Silvia. So I got a Breville from about a few years ago, and here's a cool thing. This Ranchilio Silvia is almost 20 years old. It's just shy a few months away from being 20. It's crazy. It's crazy how well this works. They did change a few things, like a different Steam One thing, different buttons here, some extra control, or some change of graphics, things like that, insulated boiler. But this is still a great enough machine to compare with the Breville. So the one note of a difference here is right now is we have a bottomless porta filter on the Ranchilio. This is not standard with the machine, so I'm gonna be kind of ruling out that in my comparison. Um, they all come with spouted porta filters just as you see with this right here. So we're gonna start by mentioning that the porta filter size of the Ranchilio versus the the Ranchilio versus the Breville is different. The Ranchilio, as you can see, is a little bit bigger of a diameter of a portafilter. This is a 58 millimeter portafilter versus the Breville is a 54. That matters because this is commercial size. This is not, which means more accessories, more baskets, more opportunities with this versus the Breville. Not that the 54 is a bad thing. Now we're going to go ahead and I just want to cover the features of the Ranchilio and then we're going to move over to the features of the Breville. Um, we have three switches here. The group head right here so water dispenses from that and that's how you brew your cup of coffee and flip it off when you're done. Power switch right here. A light to let you know when it's warmed up and heated. Flip on this switch right here, and that will give you hot water coming out of this steam wand. And all you got to do is just move that steam wand just a bit. Again, keep in mind this looks a little bit differently than the new machines. And then you got the steam button here, which again, you just open that up and steam comes out there. And this does swivel back and forth, and the new one goes up and down a little bit more than this, similar to the Breville machine over here. And we got your standard size porta filter, drip tray or cup warmer thing, and then hot water or water tank up here. Nothing special. Easy to take apart. Uh, Phillips screwdriver will get you pretty much anywhere on this machine. Uh, four or six or something like that up top, and things like that. Drip tray again looks a little different on the new one, but very very small capacity drip tray. I can't really tell if you see that too much. It's a little dirty. Um, sorry about that. And sorry for the extra noise. So that's about it. Standard machine. Um, you can brew or you can steam. You can't do both at the same time. You have to wait a little bit for it to kick on for the steam. So it's a pretty straightforward machine. Does a good job. Now let's get over to the Breville, which has all the bells and whistles that you could possibly think of. Um, you got a tamper here. That's magnetically sticks onto there so you never lose your tamper, never have to store it. You have your grinder here so your porta filter just sits in the grinder as is and you push it in and it will grind out. It's not None of these machines are plugged in right now. Um, and you got your built-in grinder on top with removable hopper 
um, that is not included on the Ranchilio. So for 35 bucks cheaper, you get a grinder and an espresso machine, which is crazy. Um, crazy, but we'll get into why a little bit later. Um, and you got your um, brew head right here. So your portal filter just simply locks in like that. Does pretty well. Um, this nozzle is gonna be a little different. This is the hot water tap here, which is more traditional on a machine. So you flimply, simply take this switch that's on the side here, turn it away from you, hot water comes out here, turn it toward you, steam comes here. I love how it has a little hole that you can shoot in there. And we're gonna get into the buttons here in just a second, but we're gonna pull this out right now. This is the drip tray, which Breville definitely did a way better job of that than um, Ranchilio did. So you got this little storage container there in the back, and this has um, like a one shot, um, a pressurized porta filter, uh, another pressurized porta filter, single and double. Um, this back flushing basket, and that's about it. And a couple other random tools in there. And you have this drip tray. You move this top up here. This is supposed to catch the grounds and separate it, but you got a heck of a drip tray in there. And this is a nice little feature where it pops up and it says empty me on there. Again, sorry that this is a little gross. I did clean it, but to deep clean a machine takes a lot of work and I didn't do that. But it has a nice little catch tray too. It sticks to that accessory tray and pulls it forward and comes out. It's not a bad feature, but it's not a great feature to be honest. It doesn't necessarily always stick the best. Fill up the water tank just as best. You can see it on the side of this machine versus you can't on the Ranchilio, but I usually just take my fingers and just stick them in the Ranchilio and test it that way. Um, you have your grind adjustment, or you have your grind adjustment based off of the amount that comes out right here. On the side, you have the adjustments to change the grind setting. You can change the filter size. So by filter size, it means what kind of basket are you using? Are you using the the single basket or are you using the standard double basket, which is typically what I use. And you can click that button to go in between this. You have a pressure gauge right here. Pressure gauge is huge on this machine. You also have the program button and the one and two cup button so you can program how long these last. So basically it will automatically stop brewing your coffee at a certain time by clicking these buttons, which is a nice little feature. It also has a little light that says scale into clean. Um, clean into scale in your hot water and all that indicator. I think I got most of those features. I might have missed something, uh, but you can let me know in the comments if I did miss something or if you have any particular questions on those features. Let's get into the raw meat, why you would buy one or the other. This one is currently sitting at my work office kitchen where everybody uses it and it does a great job. This one is currently sitting in my kitchen. Uh, this is what I use fairly regularly in the mornings when I don't use my flare. So I kind of change in between those. They're both great machines. They both have a great purpose and I wouldn't discourage you from getting either one of them. This machine is not built to last. This machine is built to be used for a little bit. I'm not sure how it's long it's going to last. Ranchilio on the other edge is these were being sold over 20 years ago. They're still being sold and they're still being made. That says a lot about this machine. And this one is 20 years old and it's still kicking. That says a lot about this machine. This machine is meant to kind of die and not really be repaired a ton. This machine is meant to be literally unscrewed by all those little screws and taken apart and replaced anything that breaks in it. It's a very user-friendly machine to repair and continue to maintain. This not so much. But this cost $735. $35 more and I have to go out and buy an expensive grinder. I think that's a huge deciding factor for people on it because that is a hefty amount to bring up. The Breville I love because I can see the range of espresso. I can program the shots. It's a lazy, easier machine to use because you don't have to flip the switch and time things and look and kind of guess when you're done. It takes a lot of the guesswork out in a lot of ways. This is great in the office. It's very user friendly. I've taught everybody how to use it and everybody got it pretty darn quickly. 
with no problems. This machine is very finicky. You have to turn this on. You have to wait a certain amount for the temperature to be the right. It's called temperature surfing. And then you have to wait for it to kick on to steam after that. It's, it's a lot more difficult on the, the user side of things, but it's still doable. It just takes a little bit more time to figure out. This is a lot quicker. The Breville is a lot quicker. But I would not buy the Breville for my home. The reason for that, and my reasoning might be different, and that might mean you should buy a Breville. The reason for that is because I want better quality shots. This thing, when I took a $350 hand grinder, the top one of the top hand grinders that you could buy, and I can I pulled shots and dialed in my shots between the Sylvia and the Breville. And by dialed it mean I I put 18 grams of coffee in made the grind size that it needed to be based off of the machine and the portafilter size. And I aimed for 36 grams out and I aimed for 30 seconds in each of the machine. And this one came out better than this one. Always, hands down, wasn't a comparison. This one was hard to drink a straight shot of espresso because I'm picky. This machine did what I wanted to do. But if you're a person who is having vanilla lattes or mochas every morning and that's your drink and that's the type of coffee you like, you're not going to notice the quality difference in espresso versus the ranchilio. This will get you the job done. This will do what you want it to do and this will taste good to you. And when I make a vanilla latte or a mocha, this is a great machine to do it. That's what I do at work. And it provides and it meets the needs that I want it to. This is the machine if you want to finick, if you want to go down the rabbit hole, if you want the commercial size pour to filter, if you want to produce really, really good shots, if you want to make good foam a little bit quicker, both of these will do good enough foam for microphone for latte art. But if you want that commercial size where you can get every accessory out there, where you can get all the baskets, where you can get the best baskets to produce the best shots and you care about quality and that's what you want, buy this. If you want to mod a machine and add a pressure gauge and add a temperature control rating in it, buy this. You're going to get better shots all the time. But if I took this machine and I put this in my work office with all these people who are going to be going through a machine who's not going to want the learning curve who are gonna just want something quick and easy and simple to use, I wouldn't buy this machine, I would buy this machine. But for my home use, I don't want this machine. I'm glad I didn't buy this machine and I think the Sylvia was worth it. The second thing is you can get good deals on any machine if you look hard enough. This machine I got for $300 for the office at church, $300 perfectly working, needed cleaned. Simple as that. $300, and I've seen the, the more expensive Brevels go for, for good prices too. If you're be patient, if you pay attention to buy and use trades, if you know what you're looking for. So you can get this down to $300 instead of $700. And this machine right here, again, like I think it's worth the $735 plus the nice grinder versus this machine. I would not be happy with this machine at home, but I am happy with it at work based off of the way that we use it. If that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, feel free to ask the questions in here. This machine I found on Facebook Marketplace, Given, keep in mind this is 20 years old. Everything was perfectly functioning on it. No issues. I found it for $150. $150. It took me years and years and years to find this machine for a good price. I missed out on quite a few that were $250, $300, but I found this one, $400, working great, still producing good shots. You can find good deals if you have a budget. So be patient, keep on brewing. If you have any questions on either one of these machines, let me know. This one steams faster. This one steams slower. This one has commercial size. This one doesn't. This one produces better shots. This one's easier and simple to use, has the pressure gauge and the grinder built in there and the programmable shots so you don't have to flip a switch. That's a pretty quick overview. This one wins on the drip tray game. This one sucks on the drip tray game. 
So if you have any questions, please let me know. Please subscribe, like this video, and consider supporting me on Patreon. If you're looking at buying any machines, please use the link in the description below where I'll make a slight commission at no extra charge for you in order to continue to fund my YouTube. Thanks for watching.